The Sustainable Honeybee Program is based upon three aspects of teaching, training, queen production, and nuke production. The queen production and nuke production are very, very closely allied, as is the training and teaching. So it's uh, two phases, four prong, prongs, so to speak. So what we're going to look at is this resin. Some call it a queen castle, but whatever, it makes much difference. It's a ten, normal 10-frame hive that's been modified. It sits on the base on the ground, and it's two reasons for it. The chamber between the base of the chamber here and the ground is 8 inches, which we found through experience is the best for the bees as well as for maintaining a good healthy colony you want to get it as far away from the wet as you can but if you put it up on a high area for example to fit a tall person where they could stand and work the hive which is nice but as you notice that we use most of our queen and nuke production we do in a sitting profile because we want all of our pro pheromones low to the ground we don't want honey up in the air we don't want things that we want it as close to the ground as possible to prevent that because you start waving things around in the air and the next thing you know you got visitors called robbers and you don't want that because that'll totally disrupt everything. What we've got is our outer cover which has a thermal barrier. Uh, it's R13 or 19 depending on the calculation. It stops the transmission of heat or cold up or down. It slows it, doesn't stop it. So it's just one of those things to help out is best. The bees then can regulate their temperature and their circulation a lot easier inside. This is a ventilation shim. It's also a feeder shim. It works both ways. It has very, very fine screen here as does the low of the stand so that the air that goes through here won't allow the beetle to go through here. The only way a beetle can get in here provided everything else is firm is through the main entry which they oftentimes can defend to a greater extent. A good healthy colony of bees can keep most of the bee beetles out, even if they decide to attack them. And it's uh, basically an oversized nuke, so it's not going to be considered a robust colony, and therefore a beetle might find it appetizing. The feeder we use is made by Thorn in the UK. Uh, it's, some people call it a bunt pan or a donut feeder. It has an inner cover, which bees come up through the inner cover from the entry here, and they're never exposed to the ambient air. They're always, whatever the atmosphere is inside is also in there. This adds to that insulation, liquid to the outside. So on this side, the near side, which is the sun up side, the wind from my direction this way and the sun is where I'm sitting. The queens generally like to go to the sun upside, so we take our inner cover over, we lay it to the side. Normally we'll have our drape, which at that point goes here and it stays on for half a minute or so to calm everything down, because when you took that top off, you suddenly changed everything in there. So oftentimes we tell people when you take a cover, inner cover off, you raise it just a fraction of an inch, you hold it there for a few seconds, then you slowly move it away. You never jerk the top off. When you do, you shock everything in there and that's when people get in trouble. Keep them calm. Stress is one of our worst enemies. So anyway, what we've got here and we've labeled these so you can see basically how this works. <clears throat> There's a thing here that's called a target and it's based on a Friday system. And the way this came about is we are all volunteers and most of us are full-time employed and we have to have a system at work. The normal commercial beekeeper works on a three-day cycle. We work on a seven-day cycle. So that's why everything in our little operation starts on Friday. Every Friday this is done between the time I get to the field about 9 o'clock and most of the time and up until about noon. That's all this is done and we go through about five to six queens every Friday set up our starters on a Friday. So there's a lot of work goes on Friday that's not readily seen by most people. When we say target, we mean it's fully drawn and it's a dry comb. And we're hoping that she will lay on this particular frame after they clean it Friday night and get everything polished about nine to two on, Friday, on Saturday, up to dark on Saturday. 
meaning that the larvae are going to be the correct age to transfer the following Wednesday, about the same amount of time. So that's why it's all based, and it has worked for us very successfully now for several years. Uh, it took us several years to get it figured out, but once we did, that's what we do. This goes in every week, a brand new, fresh target. Every week it goes in. When we go to the field, we have with us a quiet box, which it has our new target in it and our new foundation, which will go on the other side. So we're going to be adding two frames to this colony to, in the hive. Now, when we put the new target in, we won't do it right now, but this here, this will slide back, and this target from last week will now become the second week. And every week it moves back to do it week three. Now, when we're doing this, we're looking primarily when we first go in for the queen because we want to find her and we want to take her on her frame and move her to the quiet box. Now, when we close the quiet box, where she's out of danger. We don't have to close this, just keep this. And then we can do whatever we want to here. So we set it up like you see it here. It's what it would be when we get ready to go. Now, when we finish doing that, we put her back in here. We put her primarily up in this area where she's going to get to this new target as quickly as possible. We replace the inner cover. Very important that that's done in the, in the proper profile. <clears throat> Once that's in, then you've got, uh, you secure it. So you go to the other side. Normally I would be on the opposite side working that side, but here for this purposes, we're gonna do this. So I simply take this off and set it aside. And you can see how this side is set up. The pollen, this is a frame of open pollen. Hopefully as much fresh pollen as possible. Sometimes I'll get a pollen frame from another colony it's donated to change it if this gets a little weak. Always check it. It's the first one I check to see if I got good pollen and whichever side is the best, I put it toward the queen excluder, which holds my queen back here. Week four, which came from back here, when I manipulated and added that one frame, it had to go somewhere, so it came here and became week four. There'll be a few drones. She does occasionally weigh a few drones, and there'll be a few late larvae still there yet to emerge, or just emerging at that point, but that's usually pretty much empty. Next to it is a frame of foundation to keep her bees in a wax production and drawing profile. And it's right adjacent to the entry, which is over here. That's all the entry they have and need. It has a robber screen on it right now. This interferes with it being properly set, but it's four inches from this to the end. And you would set a normal hive up that way. Since we don't have any mating going on, in which case we would not have that there, we don't worry about it. Now, next to that, your ne open nectar, which they need bring the retrievers from back here. will go bring the nectar from there back here to help feed their young larvae. This is a mixed bag, and this would be primarily honey. Now, since I have to put a frame of foundation fresh in practically every week, because they draw wax like crazy, I use it sometimes in other colonies. Sometimes I'll use it here. I may put it in my starter colony. Wherever I need it, I will leave it there. Sometimes it's almost fully drawn. I may put it in as a target. So it's, it has a lot of purposes. And if I take one out, it might be honey. It just depends on what I need. Because every week I, I need three in our particular operation, well, from five to six queens, we need three, at least three, open larvae every week for our starters. I'm on the queen's side, so to speak, of the hive itself. And you can see it's, as we demonstrated in the dry run, this is going to be with bees. Now, I'm going to show you how I'm going to lay it out. So my quiet box, which is I work, is on my side, left side, and in the quiet box. When I came to the field, I brought what I'm going to need to go into this hive with. One would be what we call a target, which is a frame of fully drawn, dry, that we will put on the queen's side so that she can hopefully lay in it. 
The other is foundation. A foundation is done, or if you don't use foundation, a starter strip or a starter wood, whatever, because the bees need to be kept in a production profile while you're queen rearing. You can't let them slow down because the minute this queen starts to shut down, they go into a swarm profile, whether they can or cannot is irrelevant. If the colony decides to swarm and they do so with the resident queen mother in there, they shut her down and, uh, not shut her down, but they close down her egg laying capability and they put her on a diet. Once they start that, it doesn't stop. You can stop it, but they don't stop it. Then once they go into that swarm profile, they will swarm whether they have a queen or not. They go in and out two or three times and then eventually, if it just all out failed, they could possibly kill the queen mother. And that's a very expensive queen and you really can't afford that. So keep them in a productive profile. Keep them working constantly. So working wax is part of keeping them in that profile by keeping the right number of brood of the right age in this. So it's a managed situation. If you take too much brood out to do other things, you don't have enough brood to maintain that particular smooth operation. So it's a balancing act and it's something you learn with experience. There's no book going to tell you how to do it successfully in your particular case, because everybody's case is a little different. It's something you have to learn to fit your particular circumstances. So. We're going to put the hood on because it's cloudy today and we don't know what their attitude is going to be up front. So we would prefer to err on the side <laughs> of caution. This is a ventilator shim, which I'm going to now lay to my right here, which I will use to put this part of the inner cover. As we showed in the dry run, it has two sides. This is the queen side. This is the brood side. That's what we call it for the lack of a better term. It has a queen excluder down the middle to keep her out of there. And hopefully it's successful. Oftentimes it doesn't happen that way, but we do our best to keep it separate. So having already told them I'm coming with my smoker, which I have over here. I don't use a smoker when I'm working queens, except one puff at the entry, right in the entry to tell them I'm coming. I keep it in reserve so that in case I have a problem. I don't anticipate a problem, but I may have one. So we'll see. Sun's coming out now, so that's making me feel a little bit better. Because these bees normally are awful calm. These are, are my drapes or covers that I have ready to go when I take this one off. The inner cover. And what I'll do is when I raise the inner cover, I'll hold it off the box itself for a few seconds just to let them know that it's changing because if you jerk this thing off in a hurry, you upset them terribly. Check the inside over the box so make sure she's not here. Sometimes I have found them here. So not seeing her, we'll proceed. So I'll put this over, bees down, quiet. Take my cover and put it over. That way it keeps everything calm. Now when the sun comes out and shines on this, it warms this cloth. The bees then are forced away from it and makes it very easy for me to then work. So I simply open up the area that I'm going to be working, which is back here. See there are no bees on the top of the frames now. Very slowly and very quietly raise this frame of brood. As you can see, it's a massive medium frame, wall to wall. So we have maintained, this is the end of the season, and we have maintained this queen in productive profile ever since the early part of the season after the initial testing was done. So I'll very quietly close this curtain or cloth, and the bees are getting a little testy. So. If we can see Mama.
And I don't see mama right now, so what we'll do is to very quietly take this frame and put it over here where it will stay quiet. <laughs> sliding down the hill. <laughs> so now we'll go back in and roll this back, exposing the next. They don't particularly care for us. We were not in this hive last week because we were already going into a winter closed shutdown. So we didn't go in them. And when you don't go in every week, they get used to having no one messing with them, so to speak. So they get a little antsy when you start in. Now we can see a lot of younger brood, a little small patch of older brood in the middle. Same thing on this side. No, I don't see her there, so we'll in. Open up from the other side. This was our target when we put it in a couple of weeks back, so it's going to be a little bit more advanced than a normal target would be. And you see me being very careful not to touch that queen excluder. For one little rod and that queen excluder gets bent, and she's away, out. And I will guarantee you, if you have a crack, she will find it. Another completely full frame. So normally what we would see is one frame of totally all open, but this not being that, it's... I not see her yet. Goodness, the sun's coming out. See how they calm down the minute that sun popped out? There she is. Yep. Right down there. Right, absolutely, right on that. So what we would do in this case, we normally, this would have been an open frame of brood. Now when I find an open frame of brood like this, having worked, we try to run as many as five or six queens so that one of the or three of these queens would sacrifice one of these frames and that uh, would mean three frames of open brood which we would then put into a nuke with no queen and that would be a starter for the following wednesday when the grafting would occur so that's how it would do and the target which we had set over here earlier would go in this position Now under normal circumstances, what we had put in the box over here, the quiet box, was a third, the third week. In other words, this is a three week old brood over here, which means that they're beginning to get to the point that we'd be emerging in a few days and they would then be moved. So at this point we would close this side up and we'd prepare to go to the other side. So 